Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Isaac Fox. Um, I'm going to be doing the presentation tonight. Um, it might not be a very good presentation, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about lookalike insects. It's just kind of a basic introduction to it. It's not very exhaustive or anything. Um, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, so let's, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up a slide like this, and then I will ask if anyone can tell which is, like say, which is the wasp, and which is the fly. Um, and after a little bit, I'll go to the next slide and tell you which one's which and why. Uh, so, okay. Uh, anybody want to take a shot at this one? Okay, uh, Rachel. Uh, the one on the left is a fly because it has a um, cut sort of a chubby body structure while the other one is a lot skinnier and has slight has a slight stinger and bigger wingspan. Okay, um, so you're right. The one on the left is a fly. Uh, the easiest way to tell flies from wasps or bees uh, or a lot of the things that might look alike like that flies will have a shorter antenna. Uh, most of the time, and they only have one pair of wings, so two wings total, uh, and a pair of halters at the base of the wings. Um, pretty much all other insects with wings are going to have four wings or two pairs of wings. Um, and in this case, of course, the wasp has much longer antenna than the fly. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Anybody want to take a shot at this one? Yeah. Looks like you've got a couple a couple hands raised, Isaac. Do you want people to just shout it out or do you want to call anyone? Yeah, if people just want to shout it out, I can't see everybody apparently. Yep. So if you just want to unmute yourself, go ahead. Uh, the one on the left is from Hemiptera, and the one on the right is from Coleoptera. And you can tell because the Hemiptera will have sort of this triangle uh, on its back. And then the Coleoptera will, uh, beetles will generally have a shell that splits in the middle. Those are weird bugs. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um... So you're completely right. The one on the left is the hemipteran or true bug. The one on the right, the, yeah, the one on the left is the true bug. The one on the right is the beetle. Um, so the uh, the triangle shape is a very good way of telling them apart, um, except for they did lump the ones previously known as homoptera in with hemiptera. So like K, um, not cadids, cicadas, uh, stuff like that. They don't always have that same triangle shape. Um, and if you'll notice, beetles also have, uh, I believe it's called the scutellum. I could be wrong on the pronunciation of that, but it's uh, just much smaller and right there at the base, the um, kind of the middle of the base of the uh, wing covers there or elytra. Uh, another Easy ways to tell them apart. Hemiptera will have piercing or sucking mouth parts. Beetles or Coleoptera will have chewing mouth parts. And the four wings of Hemiptera will be uh, kind of subdivided. So they'll be uh, kind of leathery here on the uh, closer to the base. And then they'll be more, uh, more membranous down here at the tip. Uh, whereas coleoptera are going to be leathery all the way across. Okay. Um, uh, 
Um, may I? Yeah, uh, just shout it out. Well, um, on the left is the moth and the right is the butterfly. You can see by the left is the moth because the uh, body is more furry. And also the sort of eye shape on the moth is like to protect it from predators that hunt for it. Uh, so yes, the one on the left is the moth. Um, it has moths will typically have a more robust body and feathered antenna. There are um, exceptions, um, like the there's a few different kinds of moth that have really thin bodies. Uh, there's some moths that <laughs> the bodies aren't hair hardly hairy at all. Um, yeah, the generally speaking, a more robust body and feathered antenna are fairly easy, or the some of the better ways of telling a moth from a butterfly he's gonna have slend, a slender body and uh, clubbed antenna. Okay. Sometimes there can be uh, some kind of moth, like a poodle moth. Yeah. For extra points, Isaac, what are the can you ID which the, what are the moths and the butterflies that you had on the photo? Does anyone know know what they are? The the moth was an IO moth. A painted lady butterfly. Um. Okay, so that was very close on the butterfly. Uh, actually, same genus and everything. Uh, it's a slightly different species. That butterfly was a red admiral. Uh, let's see if I can get back to it. Yeah. Okay. So. Painted ladies, they're going to have um, a lot more orange on the wings. It's kind of going to be an orange and black checker pattern. Uh, but the and the red admiral is going to have mostly dark wings with the white spots there on the tips, and then a red band there across the forewing and along the border of the hind wing. Cool. And uh, just shout it out if you think you know this. The right is the stag beetle and the left is the ground beetle. Okay. Um, so that was completely right. Uh, the one on the left, the easiest way to tell ground beetles and stag beetles apart is actually by the antenna. Uh, ground beetles will have filiform or thread-like antenna. Uh, stag beetles will have elbowed and clubbed antenna. Um, they generally speaking, are found in about the same habitats. You can find both of them around logs, under logs. Um, yeah, so the easiest way to tell them apart is by the antenna. Okay. Damselfly is on the left and the antenna is on the right. I've never heard of those kind of bugs. Okay, so yeah, the, the damselfly is on the left, the antlion is on the right. Um, antlions, they, uh, they don't seem to be near as common in Kansas as you think, um, but uh, we do have a couple different species. Um, so, I don't know what I did. Anyways, um, so antlions, there's some species that the larvae build kind of funnel shaped pits. Um, so, if you see like in loose dirt at the base of trees or something, that kind of uh, funnel shaped pits in the ground, that, is, that are, those are going to be from antlion larvae. Um, so, yeah, um, it's fairly easy to tell the two. Tell damselflies and antlions apart. Damselflies will have shorter antenna, uh, barely even noticeable. The antlion will have uh, much more obvious antenna. Um, some others that you might be able to confuse with the two are owl flies, and those will have a lot longer antenna with clubs on the end. Um,
Uh, the Dame's Fly is the um the really skinny one, and the Dragonfly is the slightly thicker one. Uh, so yes, the Damselfly, uh, they will, generally speaking, have a much thinner body, uh, and they'll rest with their wings held above their body. Uh, they'll also usually be a lot smaller. Uh, the exception would be there's a few um, in South America that can <laughs> get just absolutely huge. Um, then dragonflies will have a much more robust body, typically, and they'll rest with the wings held out to the side. Um, so are there any questions so far? No, but uh, with the dame's fly, I always uh, thought it was some kind of dragonfly. Yeah, uh, so damsel flies and dragonflies are actually both in the same order, uh, Odonata. So they're very closely related. Um, and that's why they look so similar and so easy to confuse with each other. Okay. Um, so I was going to touch on the subject of memory complexes a lot more in this, um, but I didn't get around to uh, getting pictures of everything I would need for all for some of the other memory complexes in the state of Kansas. So we're only going to be looking at really one. Uh, and that will be the Monarch and Viceroy Memory Complex. Um, I guess I already <laughs> spoiled that one. Anyways, so Viceroys um, mimic monarchs to gain some protection from predators. Um, well, yeah. Uh, the monarch butterfly, of course, eats milkweed, and the Viceroy actually feeds on willows and cottonwoods. So really not something that's really all that toxic. Um, the easiest way to tell them apart is to look at the hind wings. So if you'll see my little error here, the Viceroy will have kind of a black uh, cross band or cross vein on the hind wings. It kind of looks like a little bit of a smiley face there. Uh, and the Monarch will not have that. Diving beetle is the orange one, and the water scavenger is the black one. Okay. So yes, the predaceous diving beetle is here on the left uh, with the kind of a yellowish border and the uh, the green body, and the water scavenger beetle is the one here on the right. Um, so predaceous diving beetles will have filiform or thread-like antenna. Um, they will have kind of indistinct maxillary palps. Uh, if you look over here on the water scavenger beetle, you can see uh, <laughs> just how obvious the maxillary palps can be on the water scavenger beetles. And then the underside is not gonna be flat. It's just gonna be kind of a little bit uh, convex. Um, and the water scavenger beetle will have a flat underside uh, sometimes it'll have kind of a spine-shaped keel. Uh, okay. Anyone want to take a guess on this one? Um, Earth boring is the really shiny one. The other and the scrub. Scrap beetle is the fuzzy-ish looking one. Okay. So the earth boring scarab um, is going to be here on the left. And so the way you tell earth boring scarabs from true scarabs is they will have 11 antenna segments, whereas true scarab beetles will have it was eight to 10. Um, I put nine on here because that's how many the beetle I was showing 
on here uh, has, uh, yeah, uh, these two are ones I see confused a lot in collections. So that's why, God, why I threw this one in there. Um, Drew weevil is the thin one, and the fungus weevil is uh, the bark, almost bark-like. Okay, so the fungus weevil is here on the left, um, and the true weevil is going to be on the right. So the way to tell fungus weevils from true weevils is true weevils will have the antenna elbowed. Uh, you see right here, kind of a little bit elbow right there, then the uh, fungus weevils will not have an elbow in their antenna. They'll just be a uh, straight antenna. <laughs> um, Do you know how the fungal weevil got its name? The fungus weevil? Uh, yes. So fungus weevils, um, they're actually a completely different family from true weevils. Um, a lot of them actually feed on uh, funguses, so that's why they're called fungus weevils. Um, yeah. The firefight is on the left and the soldier beetle is on the right. Yeah, I was going to say that. Well, you're right. Okay. So the firefly, um, they'll have the pronotum kind of covering the head a lot of times. Um, I actually picked this picture because it shows that that's not always a reliable characteristic. Sometimes they will go ahead and stick their head just out from the uh, pronotum, especially if they're trying to eat something. Um, and Another easy way to tell them apart is usually on a lot of species the uh, of firefly, they'll have a light producing organ on the tip of the abdomen. That's not true for all species. Um, and some species have a much larger light producing organ than others. Um, so, but it's not 100% reliable either, but it's, uh, most species will have it. And then, of course, soldier beetle, the head's not hidden by the pronotum, and they never have a light producing organ. Uh, solitaire beetle actually looks like some kind of soldier thingy. Mm -hmm. it, like it will attack anything. So, yes, go ahead. No, you go ahead. As I was just going to say, uh, soldier beetles, the larvae are actually predatory, but the adults aren't really all, all that, um, they're not usually all that predatory. Usually they eat um, nectar, pollen. Um, I could be wrong. There might be a few that are predatory, but typically speaking, they're not all of that um Predatory. <laughs> uh, anyways. I have a question. This isn't about the firefly or the soldier beetle, but okay. what is the difference between a carpenter bee, a false bumblebee, and a bumblebee? That is a very good question and one that I forgot to put in the slideshow. Okay, so carpenter bees will have um, a hairless abdomen. So the abdomen will be um, mostly hairless and it'll be shiny. Um, Bumblebees and false bumblebees are actually both species of bombus. So they're both technically bumblebees. Um, so um, both of those, they're going to look very similar, uh, just slight differences in color pattern. Um, but yeah, bumblebees will have a hairy abdomen. Carpenter bees will have a hairless abdomen. On this one, the right is the bark beetle, and the left is the 
both trick, and it's actually a um, red shouldered one. Yes, yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, that's the uh, red shouldered Boster kid. Boster kid. Boster kid. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the way to tell those apart is well. Obviously, this one's a lot bigger. Um, that one's a lot smaller, but if you can't see the size, the way I tell them, a bark beetle from a shot hole borer, uh, which is another name for the, or powder post borer, that's another name for the foster kids. Um, so the way you tell them apart is foster kids will have a loose antenna club. The bark beetles will have a very, very compact antenna club. Um, The cuckoo wasp is on the left and the zeppi is on the right. Okay, uh, so you're right. Cuckoo wasp is on the left, zeppi is on the right. Um, so the cuckoo, cuckoo wasp, uh, a lot of times they'll have very dense punctures all over the body. Uh, and the seta or hairs will be kind of inconspicuous. You don't usually see it very often. You kind of see there on the edge of this one, uh, the, the seta on it. And then sweat bees, they typically don't have, aren't as heavily punctured. And the seta or hairs are usually fairly obvious on them. Um, and a lot of times cuckoo wasps also have this uh, kind of uh, we'll have these teeth at the tip of the abdomen, but not always. Um, what I forgot, what I mean, not really forgot, but what kind of wasp? I think it's a cuckoo wasp. What kind of wasp? Um, uh, uh, bites off the antenna of a cockroach and uh, takes it somewhere and, and then lay eggs in it. That one, it's. I don't remember the exact kind of well. I think they just call them a um, cockroach wasp. It's a steel blue cockroach cricket hunter, I think. I'm not sure. So that's actually a little bit different. Uh, so the steel blue cricket hunter, uh, that actually paralyzes uh, crickets and uh, stocks its nest with those. Um, I think the one she was referring to was the one that... Uh, that uh, bites off the antenna of the cockroaches and then leads it to the nest. I think they just call those cockroach wasps. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, excuse me. Uh, what would yep. be uh, one wasp that uh, <clears throat> does that to... Uh, yeah. uh, 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 I can't remember, but there's this one rat wasp that uh, literally uh, grabs, uh, drags around a uh, a type of uh, insect that I like, have to show you. I, I can't remember what it is. Um, so there's actually quite a few different wasps that, um, that prey on other insects and take them back to their nests to stock the nest with okay. them. Um, one you might be referring to is the cicada killer, um, very, fairly common large wasp, uh, that parasitizes cicadas, um, and there's a few others, the steel blue cricket hunter, like was already mentioned, um, uh, there's uh, quite a few. The uh, one that I saw was uh, was uh, dragging around a, uh, a a big grasshopper, like um, this big at the least. Okay. It was pretty small. Okay. Locus. If it was dragging a grasshopper, uh, there's a few it could have been. Um, 
not very many. Now, if it's dragging and Katie did, it's very distinctly possible that it was a uh, great golden digger wasp. Those uh, prey on Katie dids. Um, yeah, I'm not say a great golden digger or perhaps a tarantula hawk does that sometimes. Um, so that's about the end of my presentation. Uh, so one thing I forgot to put in the references is I took all of the pictures myself. Um, there, I guess I've got to put that in there. Uh, but uh, are there any other questions? Um, so, uh, uh, one more question. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, in, uh, at my house, uh, there is this like, uh, one wasp that we have. Um, it like, it, I, I don't know if, um, uh, it's, it's like new to me because what it does, I've been watching it for a while. So what it does is it drags out uh, bait in the middle of uh, an area and then waits there until more prey comes because that and this uh, rotates that. I I don't know what it is and uh, I've just been watching it. Oh. What kind of bug ha are, are really tiny and lives in the dirt um, and and has like crab-like antenna like uh, this? Um, so you might be talking about a pseudoscorpion. Um, so pseudoscorpions, it's not a true scorpion. Um, fairly closely related though. Um, here, one second. I might be able to find it on bug guide right quick. Okay. Does that look about right? This is also a really good chance if anyone has something they're trying to work on when they're, as they're putting their boxes together. Isaac is an expert in this and can probably answer all kinds of questions about collecting, where he's found things. <laughs> um, I have a question. Okay. So can, uh, so two questions actually. Uh, how do you tell the difference between like a queen and a like for wasps and bees, how do you can how can you tell the queen and the like soldiers and yeah. okay so the queen is going to be a lot bigger um, on most of them um, you're not going to see a queen wasp on most species except for about maybe August till March-ish, they, the queens overwinter outside the nest in other areas. So you'll, a lot of wasps you'll see overwintering like under bark are gonna be queens. Um, but yeah, the queen will be a lot larger. Um, uh, <laughs> it's about all I can say on it. Um, And another thing, can you present queens in show? 
Yes, yes, you can. You, uh, if you happen to find a queen wasp or bee, um, obviously you don't want to like, go out to a hive and take the only queen bee and put it in your box. Um, but if you happen to find a queen wasp or a queen bee that isn't otherwise occupied, feel free to use it in your box. <laughs> and I just thought of one more. Can like if you get the like the whole nest, can you like show them or is it just so uh, if you get an entire nest, um one thing you can do with that is actually an educational display. Um obviously it's, it's kind of dangerous to get an entire nest of wasps, but uh, <laughs> if you do happen to get one, you can use it as an educational display. Uh, you can only use two specimens, uh, preferably a male and a female, in your box at most uh, per species. Um, so unless you find like a drone and a queen or a drone and a worker, you'll probably want to keep it just to a single specimen in just your regular box. But for a, um, for a educational display, you can use an entire nest. Yeah. I have two questions. Uh, one is there, does someone have a sample of a bug box that they could show us? And second question is, is there anything else other than a bug box that we can present for 4-H as our uh, first year in insects? You can use uh -huh. a, a book for like a bug blog, or, or that's what I call it. Okay. Oh, that is a pretty, oh, that is a pretty. Oh, uh, do you mean by like bug case? Or something. Right. If instead of a bug case, is there any other projects that we could do instead of the bug case? I what you could do instead of a more traditional collection is the entomology collection notebook. So you take pictures of live insects. Um, actually Vicky would be the one to talk to about that. She could tell you all about it. Um but um, yeah, that's. Um, you could go two ways. Um, Isaac's mentioned the collection notebook. You take, try to take two different views of an insect. You put them on a page. The pictures have to be three by five or four by six. And then you underneath that list, the order the insect is from, the common name, and the date locality, just like you do under the live specimen. And then you have to put them behind dividers by order. The resources for that are also on the 4-H website. The other thing you can do is an educational exhibit and we have expanded that to include a lot of things. You can do a traditional box, you can do a mobile, you could do a um, diorama, um, you can make up a game and enter it for a educational display, which is an alternative. You can do a poster and they now are judged by the entomology judges, not by miscellaneous or something else. They are entered in the entomology department. This is there is a video from last year on educational displays on the website that you can look at. Um, this is totally random, but whenever I, uh, I looked up bricks that are by a tree, I, I have a giant pickle jar and I just put them in there with a bunch of dirt. Well, uh, bugs that I find under the dirt. Uh, so yeah, observing insects, uh, that you collect live ones, especially is, um, it's actually really useful. Um. You, you get to see some a little bit of behavior of your insects, and yeah, so it's 
it's a really fun thing to do. Uh, excuse me. Um, so I might have cut out when you were when I uh, uh after I was talking about that uh, that was that uh, I was looking at that uh, was like using bait. No, uh, 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 what exactly? What kind of wasp is it exactly? Uh, well, what was it? What was it uh, using as prey? Really, anything. Hmm. It was okay. just it was just bringing in r- random things. Like one time, it brought in a firefly, grasshopper, cockroach. One time, even a spider. Cockroaches are nasty. I know. Um. So that. What color was the wasp, William? Can you describe it a little bit? Got to unmute, William. We can't hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, I can't. I can't really get close to it because, like, in like six feet at the least, uh, it gets uh, it, it it starts flying around, and uh, yeah, I can't. I can't really see it. But all I know is it uh, does that. Doesn't really let me see it. All I, all I know is like it's like medium size. Um. So one thing you can do is. Um, actually, a couple of different things you could do. You could try getting a picture of it. Um, and actually, if you want to, if you can get a picture of it, you can send me an email with the picture. Um, if, um, well, uh, at, actually, it, it does actually look a bit- Kind of like a mud dauber, but I don't think that's a behavior of a mud dauber. Yeah, no, no, not not quite what a mud dauber would usually do. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a tricky one. I can't think of any wasps right off the top of my head with that kind of behavior. Um, yeah. I, I I will take a picture of it. Actually, I've seen a couple of them. I'm not sure if I've been. Uh, yeah. I've seen a couple of them. I'll go ahead and take a picture of them since right now I'm home. So, yeah, I, yeah, okay. And I'll send you a picture. It does kind of look like a mud dauber, though. I'll send you a picture. Um, hey, uh, Shane, uh, so would I, should I uh, just put my email address in the chat? Yep, that'd be just fine. And we can we'll send those out as, to the group as well. Um, hey, one more thing, I mean, if you kind of even want to wrap us up, with, unless there's more questions. You mentioned the idea of an educational display. Um, so you did a really great presentation on lookalike insects. What are some other, you know, similar to that, ideas that people could do for educational displays? Because this was a really good example of something they could talk about. Um, so, yeah, uh, the lookalike insects would be a good uh, educational display. Uh, some of the others, insect life cycles, um, maybe something, uh, trying to think what all I've <laughs> done as educational displays. Um, you could do something about insect camouflage. Um, there's really, uh, educational displays. It's kind of only limited by your imagination. <laughs> Habitats. Yeah. Um. So, uh, where the uh wasps would mostly be is uh around here in the mud. 
So uh, I I I I think it's it's uh, most likely a mud dauber, but it's not here right now. So yeah, it's most likely a mud dauber because it it mostly like uh, it it sometimes plays in uh, grab mud grabs in mud and all that. But either than that, yeah. Does it burrow in the ground or is it just picking up mud there? You're muted again, William. We can't hear you. Um, it's, it's been, I, I, I don't, it's, I, it's definitely building a nest. It's just, I, I don't know where it's building it. It's been going back and forth, forth from this, uh, from the mud pile, uh, to, uh, uh, somewhere else and then back, forth, back, forth or oh, a couple times. But I, I, I hear in that it just hunts really. It's a uh, to me. It's a pretty strange wasp. I've been seeing it come down, um, down uh, over uh, here. Uh, wait. Over here, uh, uh, come on. Yes, I can't. I'm having there. It mostly comes over here. Uh, I've been looking around for a while, and where it was. So, yeah, it just comes in, uh, places a nest like uh up there. Uh, can't I don't know if you if you can see it, but there's like a nest up there. It, it, yeah, it like it 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 makes like a mud dauber nest, but I'm not sure if it's an actual mud dauber because that's not a behavior of a mud dauber. Um, is that one of those uh wasps that uh picks up mud, and creates a nest, and put and then puts a uh dying spider in in with the water, uh with the eggs and so when the eggs hatch it can eat a spider oh, one of the things you guys gained if you notice in the chat so vicky and isaac both put their email in and they know all kinds of things about the insects across kansas so if you have questions those you've now made a connection so you know what they look like and you talk to them, uh, you can send those questions directly to them and they are extremely helpful. So before we get off, I would encourage you, this is going to be recorded and posted um, on the Kansas 4-H entomology website that we put in the chat, but write down those two emails because those are two people that can help you in the future. So if you have questions and you're like William out on location, you can, uh, <laughs> you can go through and get some help. Any kind of closing or parting thoughts, Isaac? That was it was an awesome presentation. Hey guys, uh, one more thing I want to tell you: uh, every time it kills something, it lays it on a piece of grass like I have right here. I got like um, once in a while I like, pick grass because uh, I I just, I just wonder what it will do with it. So. Yeah. I just say uh, Wednesday night I'll be work presenting on the giant Asian hornets. It'll I'll also talk to you a little bit about um, making an educational display using a slideshow. Um, 
My son that's in the Army is home right now. He lives in Washington State and has had contact with the people in Washington State collecting the June Hornets and working with that. So we've got some up-to-date information there. So I hope you join us again Wednesday night. All right, so hopefully everyone has, it's the same link. We'll be here same time next Wednesday and then our final session will be on Friday. Um, again, all the same link. If you have questions, come prepared. You will have an opportunity to ask and engage with our speakers. I think that wraps us up tonight. So thank you everyone very much for being on. Well, thank you.